This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You need a website or a domain. The Appalachian Trail is a 2200 mile hike from Georgia to Maine, or Maine to Georgia. Before 1948, completing a hike of the entire trail in one journey was not considered feasible. After 1948, it became a sport. That was because of one man named Earl Schaefer, nicknamed the original crazy one. In 2023, you should plan to wear through two to three pairs of boots on your hike. In 1948, Earl Schaefer did it in one. Of course, boots of this time were meant to be repaired and modern hiking boots aren't, but there is something special about the boots Earl Schaefer chose to hike the trail in. Russell moccasins are not your average leather boot, and today we're gonna go over the three reasons as to why they don't last a lifetime. They last generations. You'd expect a boot company that started making boots in 1898 and hasn't really changed anything since then to be outdated, especially when you compare their boots to something like the Merrill Hydro Runners and the Nike whatevers and the uh, Solomon Hootsie Tootsies. There's no way they could keep up with those things, right? When I asked the CEO of Russell Moccasins, why people still wear Russell Moccasins instead of all of these different types of boots, he said it's because Russell Moccasins are basically the only heritage boot that can still keep up with all of these other fancy dancy technical modern hiking boot brands. So today we're gonna look at the first ever boots to hike the Appalachian Trail. I thought it would be fitting that I don't take a step in these boots until they're on the Appalachian Trail. And they are. These are basically as close as you can get in modern day to the original boots that hiked the entire Appalachian Trail for the first time by Earl Schaefer. He was supposed to hike the entire Appalachian Trail with his friend Walter Weinmiller, but they both went to World War II and sadly Walter died in the Battle of Iwo Jima. So then Earl Schaefer took a 2,000 mile hike to quote, walk the war out of his system and he did it wearing the older version of these. And the Smithsonian says that they reek because his boots are at the Smithsonian and they keep them in a closed drawer because he did not wear socks a lot. So together, you and I shall build these boots from the bottom up, much like the moccasins are actually made because this is true moccasin construction. When you think of an actual moccasin from ancient times, you're thinking of how these boots are made and that's what makes them so special. We should talk about the leather. This is five to six ounce leather from SB Foot. It's called their Timberjack leather. It's chrome tanned, it's not vegetable tanned. And interestingly enough, I found out that you can also brain tan leather, which is when you get the leather from the animal, you kill the animal and soak the leather in their blood and it has enough acid and tannins to pull out anything that would rot. I'll have to try it. This leather is used because it is water resistant, very, very soft, scratch and scuff resistant, and it's just a solid leather that will last you for many, many generations because that is what you need. Since most boots are built from the top down, what happens is when you get to the bottom, you still don't have a boot. There's nothing that you could rest your foot on, but when a boot is made from the bottom up and leather is laid at the bottom and then flipped up like this, you already have the world's most primitive moccasin, and that is how these boots start, from the bottom up like that. Then, of course, you have the toe piece, which is the top part of the boot here, which is why it looks like it's two different pieces of leather, because that's exactly what it is. And what Russell patented in 1941 is the overlap stitch. So most boots are made with what is called a butt stitch where the toe piece connects with the vamp. These two pieces of leather crash into each other. You stitch through them, bing, bang, boom, butt stitch. Nothing wrong with butts, they're perfectly great things. But what happens is they are not as water resistant, so you run into the issue of water gets into your boots. How did Russell fix that? Interestingly, through the overlap stitch. Fascinatingly, this is the first process of making these boots and we already have functional footwear. They're not boots, they're just very primitive moccasins. We don't have the quarter part of the leather up here, like the up the ankle part of the boot, but right along this line, we already have the moccasins because the bottom part, called the vamp, very important, and the toe piece are already put on. So essentially, you can already walk around with this footwear and have a little bit more protection. It'll just be leather under your feet, but still. So, oh, oh. I just had a dream that you didn't know you could pursue your passion by making a website quick and easy with Squarespace. What the heck? You know that, right? It used to be hard and expensive to build a website, but now with Squarespace's fluid engine, you can just drag and drop things everywhere, and before you know it, you have a beautiful website. And what's a passion without a blog? What's a business without a blog? You need to market it, and Squarespace makes it easier than ever because you can make blog posts through Squarespace, make them beautiful, schedule them to post later. They're unbeatable. 
blogs. And that's not even the end of it. If the business is doing well, you're gonna wanna sell some products. Don't worry, you can do that all on Squarespace. And if you ever open up a brick and mortar store, you can have a point of sale system all through Squarespace. You're probably thinking, well, there's probably a better time to pursue my passion and to get started with Squarespace, right? There is no better time. Time to start right now. You can go on squarespace.com slash the iron snail to save 10% off your first order of a website or domain. So what I really just explained to you is a single vamp construction Russell moccasin. There's a few more things obviously, like the outsole, the midsole, all that stuff that goes on the boot and the top part and laces and all that, but that's essentially what Earl Schaefer was rocking, minus things that we'll get into in a second. But more importantly, what I'm wearing today are double vamp construction boots, and these are way different because inside of the vamp, which is this outside little moccasin part, there is a inner vamp, aka a little booty. And this little booty is something that you want with you at all times. Nothing wrong with butts, they're perfectly great things because it's silicone tanned, so it's waterproof, or it's basically as waterproof as you can get. And it makes these boots a lot more functional as you're hiking down somewhere like this, where there are water and creeks and stuff that you wanna step through. But either way, this is how double vamp construction works. And this is where it gets very fascinating because it involves a lot of stitches in precarious areas so that way no water gets in. Also, did I mention brain tanning yet? This is where the boots get really, really brilliant and not to sound overly poetic, but this is why I really loved Russell Moccasin. So forgive me if I get too poetic, but close your eyes and picture a very well tanned booty. And that booty wraps all the way around the bottom of your foot. And then when that leather comes to the top, it's sewn right in the top center. And the reason it's sewn there is because the seams that you have that are gonna let water in are around the toe piece. So what Russell does with that inner booty is they slide it in to the outer vamp. And then if water gets past those seams, it has to go exactly on the top center of the boot and be there for a very long time in order to kind of leak through those stitches on the top, which is, to be honest, unless you're standing in the water for a very long time, very, very unlikely to happen. So, what you get is boots that are virtually impenetrable to water at that vamp line. I feel like I should say the Pledge of Allegiance or something. Okay, so outer vamp, inner vamp, and then we have an oak tanned heel counter which goes around the ball of your foot up to the ankle. And the point of that is just to stabilize the back of your foot so you don't roll anything as you're going up and down mountains. But interestingly, the front part of these boots where your toes are is meant to roll a little bit. So if you're going up and down a mountain or something like that, a Goodyear welted boot will be very stiff and not flex. These boots are meant to flex. So if you have to go on any turns or any uneven terrain, it's a little easier on your feet than having them basically be an entire straight jacket. We essentially have these boots all together. Let's just slap on this upper part. There's a gusseted tongue here. That's fantastic. But the only thing we're missing is the outsole and the midsole. We could just walk on these boots. It would just have a leather bottom, but there's much more. Well, there's not even that much more. There's only three layers, which is why you can feel a lot more under these boots than Goodyear welted boots, for example, which quick tangent, and this is why. Goodyear welted footwear, since it's built from the top down, there is a gap where there is no leather right off the bat. If it's built from the bottom up, there is no gap. It's flat, that's where you can put your foot. You can't have that gap, so you have to fill it with something, usually cork. Since there is that extra layer of cork, you are separating your feet from the ground even more. So that's, you know, doesn't really hurt someone, but if they're trying to feel the ground more and maneuver on rough terrain, much easier to do that without that layer. I don't think Earl Schaefer walked right here, but still, pretty cool to think that he was, you know, on his way in one direction or another, wearing very similar boots. I was gonna say, you should do one facing this way and then one facing that way, you get both. All right, well, have, oh, this is good, stay just like that. But I can get you in there. Okay, great. Nice okay. meeting you all, nice talking to you all. Bump you. Yeah. Shake you. Great to meet you, you Michael. Too. I've actually found myself getting way too shy in a lot of situations, so I try, I'm trying to make friends. So these are not Goodyear welted boots, like I said. There is no cork filling, but we do have the outer vamp and the booty, AKA the inner vamp. But if we lift the booty a tiny little bit, we can sandwich something else in there. And Russell sandwiches a pour on slip sole. So that way, if you're going down a hill, you're going down a mountain, you're going down, you're doing something with high impact on your feet, that pour on slip sole cushions the blow, which is way easier on your feet and on your body in general. And if you're in the boot community and I said pour on slip sole, you probably just threw up in your mouth a little bit and the reason for that would be you'd think well pour on is going to break down very fast so it's going to be squished and it's going to be useless there's no point in it being there but 
Good news, I have it on good authority that they have opened up boots 10 years old, 15 years old, and the Poron slip sole is still in great condition, still functioning as it should. So that's actually a really huge factor as to why these boots are so comfortable when you're hiking, when you're hunting, when you're walking around. The police are here. We have every single part of the boot together except this bottom part, the midsole and the outsole. Now, interestingly, since we have a piece of leather underneath the foot already, we will blank stitch that onto this oak tanned midsole and stop there. So we have a flat piece of leather. So with this outer oak tanned piece of leather, we then stitch through the ridge on the outside into a piece of rubber and we have a rubber midsole there. And then finally, we have this very aggressive Vibram outsole that is glued on to the rubber midsole. And that is why these last so long. Let me explain. There are layers to go to repair the boot before you even touch the actual vamp of the boot. If the Vibram sole wears down, you just pop that off because it's glued on. You glue another one on. You didn't even touch the rubber midsole. And if something happens to the rubber midsole, which is very rare because you have this beefy Vibram outsole over here, then you can just stitch that back on to the oak midsole and you still haven't messed with the structure of the boot at all. And finally, since this is true moccasin construction and it's built from the bottom up, that means that even if you have to take out that stitching and put on a new oak leather midsole, you still haven't messed with the integrity of the shoe because it's built like this. Okay, so I can totally see why Earl Schaefer would want to hike the entirety of the Appalachian Trail in these boots. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you very, very soon. It's late. It's past midnight and I need to go to Bandy Bai on my honk shoe, honk shoe. So I will see you all very, very soon. Goodbye.